Welcome to the Awesomers.com podcast. If you love to learn, and if you're motivated to expand your mind, and heck, if you desire to break through those traditional paradigms and find your own version of success, you are in the right place. Awesomers around the world are on a journey to improve their lives and the lives of those around them. We believe in paying it forward, and we fundamentally try to live up to the great Zig Ziglar quote, where he said, you can have everything in your life you want if you help enough other people get what they want. It doesn't matter where you came from, it only matters where you're going. My name is Steve Simonson, and I hope you will join me on this awesomer journey. If you're launching a new product manufactured in China, you will need professional, high-resolution, Amazon-ready photographs. Because Simo Global has a team of professionals in China, you will oftentimes receive your listings photographs before your product even leaves the country. This streamlined process will save you the time, money, and energy needed to concentrate on marketing and other creative content strategies before your item is in stock and ready for sale. Visit simoglobal.com to learn more, because a picture should be worth 1,000 keywords. Hey everybody, today we're going to talk about one of my pet peeves. Do you want to know what it is? It's the slime balls and scumbag companies that are trying to prey on entrepreneurs and business owners around the world. And in today's episode, we're going to talk about an exact example where a company has sent a, uh, a letter, essentially, indicating and I'm looking like, uh, even impersonating a government entity and giving us the impression that if we don't comply, if we don't send them the money as they're showing on their piece of paper, that somehow we'll be running afoul of the law. And as it turns out, as I'll explain in the episode, uh, it couldn't be further from the truth. And I dislike any company that their foundation, their premise is based on uh, working over somebody else. It doesn't matter if they're working over the elderly or an entrepreneur or an elderly entrepreneur. I don't like that stuff. And I, I really want to find uh, situations that are like this. And if you have any, don't hesitate to share them with us. And we'll go after them and we'll definitely try to uh, at least shine the light on them a little bit. In this case, you'll find that this company has been doing this for years and they have built a profitable business on scaring and falsely advertising that they, uh, in these uh, advertisements they send out by mail. So enjoy today's episode. I look forward to your feedback. Everybody, Steve Simonson coming to you again from awesomers.com. The Awesomer podcast is uh, live and ready for you. Uh, awesomers.com is a place to kind of look it up and find all the details. Uh, today, I want to talk about a kind of a common problem that we've seen uh, really over the past uh, nearly 30 years of business that I've been uh, carrying on. Um, I, I started my first business when I was 18, when I was first legally allowed to, and I recently just turned 48. That's 30 years in business. Now, technically, I started it when I was almost 19, so there's a few months uh, in between that probably shouldn't count, but I'm going to just round up for the benefit. Uh, of uh, easy math, if you will. So one of the things that we see commonly is there are scam artists, essentially, and they, they send uh, messages to companies. And often those messages, uh, they used to be uh, disguised in uh, like a Yellow Pages invoice. Uh, so in the old days, people used the Yellow Pages as a, as a typical uh, methodology for online marketing and lead generation and so forth. Since uh, Yellow Pages have gone the way of the dodo, uh, they have targeted other things, and a lot of those things tend to involve uh, what appear to be legal compliance notices. So uh, recently, we received a legal compliance notice, and the, the first thing that we noticed is that the envelope from the legal compliance was from Florida, and it was sent to our labor company, which is based in the state of Washington. And so we're like, well, we don't have any employees in Florida. We don't do any business in Florida. Why would why would Florida send us a message? And, and that's a fair question to ask, right? Why, in fact, would Florida send a message to us? The answer is they wouldn't. So already my spidey sense is tingling. All right, so the bottom line is when you get something, your spidey sense starts tingling, you gotta start asking questions. In my case, as I said, the, the item came in from Florida. I don't know how well y'all could see that. It looked like it's reversed for those watching uh, from home. But as soon as something is marked from Florida and it's to a Washington-based company about legal compliance, again, I'm wondering what's up. Uh, the other interesting thing is the, the reply that they kindly included was to the Filing Labor Compliance Department in Miami, Florida also. So this is a, a, you know, another clue. When I actually looked at the document, 
uh, the document had some very interesting and I would say misleading details. Catalyst 88 was developed to help entrepreneurs achieve their short and long-term goals in e-commerce markets by utilizing the power of shared entrepreneurial wisdom. Entrepreneurship is nothing if not lessons to be learned. Learn from others. Learn from us. I guarantee that we will learn from you. Visit Catalyst88.com because your success is our success. A giddy up. So to describe it, um, I'm going to just share my screen for those of you who can watch at home. Otherwise, I'll just describe it. So at the very top right, it's got a very sophisticated looking barcode, labor law compliance notice it reads. Failure, failure to comply with posting regulations can lead to fines up to 17000 And then they quote these labor laws, which may or not be real and may or may not be relevant. Um, in fact, they are real and they are relevant, but they're federal laws. And they are... Uh, compliance notices about posting labor regulations within a company. I'll talk more about what it really means at the end. Then they show my company, Simul Team, in Duval, Washington, and the type of business, the name of the business, the type of company, and, and it really kind of looks like it's an official-looking document, right? Because they know it's a Washington limited liability company. You know the status is active. And on the right, it's got the, the UBI number, which is the Universal Business Identification Number for the state of Washington. So it looks like they've got all of these inside um, government document uh, IDs. And further, they've got a, an address to the left that says F. Labor Compliance Department. Now, the F has been abbreviated, which is a very interesting little detail. Um, as you'll uh, maybe recall from the... Uh, envelope that they include, the self-addressed stomped envelope, it says Filing Labor Compliance Department. That's the name of their company. And so, anyway, I'm going to just carry on with the description of the rest of the document. Fundamentally, it's got a bunch of official looking things. The notice date. Uh, your business is required by federal law to keep these things up to date, even if you have just one employee. Pursuant to federal law, this and that. And they go through all this, and it just looks like it is going to scare the crap out of you if you don't get it right. And it, it goes further to, you know, show that, you know, if you don't respond by this date, you could have a problem. And it's only $84, you know, to, to get this uh, compliance done. So the, the entire point of this document is to look like a real live uh, government document, but it is nothing of the sort. Now, the regulation they're quoting is real. If you have employees, even a single employee on that employee's, if it's a work premises, you're required by law to show certain federal uh, compliance documents, which include things like minimum wage um, and other things that are to help employees if they have a, run into a jam with their employer. At the very bottom of the page, they say this, this little tiny disclosure, very small print, readable, but still small. Filing Labor Compliance Department is a non-government publisher of copyrighted compliance poster compilations which are intended to assist employers in meeting their legal obligations under labor law posting regulations. If you're not 100% satisfied, simply return it uh, within 30 days for a full refund. But fundamentally, my issue with this company is they're complete scam artists. Everything they're doing by showing a, a Washington Compliance Department address in Olympia, which is where the the government is in this state. That's the state capital of Washington. So they, they're looking like the Labor Compliance Department, if you just skip over the F dot. So that's absolutely, absolutely misleading. They're showing my business identification number, and a lot of people might assume, oh gosh, where, where would they get it if they're not the government? They're showing the Washington Limited Liability Company details. These are all legitimate details, but they're also a matter of public record. So what happens is these types of companies, they troll around to all the states, they look for new business openings and filings, and then they send out these kind of troll notices, and they'll send these out uh, annually. There's other variations of these types of uh, schemes as well. Um, you'll often find other, you know, kind of misleading departments or di misleading company names that are really, they're trying to scare the crap out of you and go, you know what, for 84 bucks, let me just get this behind me. And that's another check mark off my list. But I want to just call people's attention to this is a complete and utter sham. These people are not government people, even though they're, they're acting like they're government uh, compliance department. And they've gone so far as to make a, you know, a PO box in Olympia, Washington, 
and calling it the F dot labor compliance department. Again, total scam artist. So every business owner should be aware there's people constantly trying to prey on your business. Don't let them do it. Uh, there's no point in allowing uh, outsiders who have no vested interest in your company and they have no interest in actually helping you. I would have a lot more empathy and probably even support of a company like this who instead of trying to trick people into paying them for their product, that they came out and they said, hey, you know what? Here's a law. You may not be in compliance with it. We're going to help you get there. And you know what? Uh, not only are we going to do it for this first time for some X amount of dollars, but you can go ahead and subscribe and annually we'll just automatically send you a new one. These sorts of things really are important and they really are something that we should have an easy button for as employers and, and business owners. But they have chosen a very, very deceptive method of, uh, of marketing. And in something, you know, my personal opinion, uh, that complete scam art. So I would highly stay away from these types of companies and seek out the companies that will do a better job. So uh, how do you solve this particular uh, labor law compliance? Uh, you can go search for these types of um, display posters, the, the legal compliance poster. And you can find it on Amazon. You can find it all over the place. You can find it off the Depot Staples. Just any, any major place that sells business-related supplies for very inexpensive rates, certainly far less than $84. And, uh, and they also will not try to scam you. They'll, they'll be honest and, and you know, treat you right. So uh, the, again, I want to just share with you guys. You are the prey, and there is a bunch of predators uh, in the marketplace. There are a bunch of predators in the marketplace. Hopefully, as fellow awesomers, you can try to see all the way through these things and look, if something doesn't smell right, start to look in uh, deeper. One of the core principles that I share and that I have talked about for many years is the idea of Occam's razor. And we're going to talk about a little bit more about that right after we come back from the break. We'll be right back. Hey, Amazon Marketplace professionals, congratulations on your success to date. Your creativity, strategic vision, problem solving, and discipline have allowed you to build your own e-commerce business. Wouldn't it be great if you had more time to focus on the things that truly drive the sales and growth of your company? Instead of getting lost in a dozen different services and countless spreadsheets, what if there was one system that connected to your Amazon account and automatically gave you the information that you needed to make great decisions and really impact your business? Parsimony ERP can do that. Parsimony is the business operating system for your marketplace business. With Parsimony, you get true double entry bookkeeping, easy financial statements, full customer service tools, and item by item profitability, along with project and task management, and more features are being added all the time. Learn more at parsimony.com. That's parsimony, P A R S I M O N Y.com. Parsimony.com. We've got that. Okay, we're back here. Uh, we're talking about, you know, kind of the, the general philosophy of what is Occam's razor? What, what does that mean? And uh, to catch everybody up, the, the general, my general interpretation of Occam's razor is whatever the most likely solution is usually the most clear and, and evident solution, which is, I really butchered that, uh, that translation. But basically, if, if something doesn't smell right and you think it's a scam, it's probably a scam. If you see something and you're like, this thing, you know, whatever they're saying, it doesn't add up. And my gut's telling me that the most obvious answer is probably the right answer is another way to say it and perhaps more clear. And that's, that's what the, the theory of Occam's razor is. So many times we say to ourselves, well, I don't know enough. Uh, we suffer from the, the, the you know, self-proclaimed and, and often accurate imposter syndrome where it's like, well, somebody else knows more than me at all times. So I should just listen to them. But when your gut is telling you something, it's really important to listen. And a lot of people don't realize that there's two sides to your brain. And one side is nonverbal. That's the side that has kind of a lot of the answers. And that side knows unequivocally this is the wrong thing to do, whatever the case may be. In my case, we had this uh, fake labor law compliance notice. So uh, I have the experience to know what to look for. But when your gut grabs you and says something doesn't smell right, that's the nonverbal side of your brain that's saying, this is not right. It can't turn those things into words to the other side of your brain that actually can put it into words and go, this is not right because of this reason or that reason. So you, when, when people talk about trusting their gut instinct, it's really trusting what their, their other side of their brain, the nonverbal side, has already worked out. It, it's, it cannot be underestimated the value of a gut feel 
uh, when it comes to entrepreneurs. Uh, you know, often women call it female intuition. Whatever you want to call it is fine with me. It doesn't matter the name. It just matters that you follow that gut instinct. Now, doesn't mean we can't be wrong. It also doesn't mean that we know, you know, everything uh, just, you know, from our guts without learning. But in general, when something doesn't smell right, it probably is not right. Uh, there's, there's so many uh, examples we could give of th this type of uh, situation. So Occam's razor, very, very important philosophy, and I highly recommend that you guys get on board with that. Uh, we're going to take a quick break, and uh, I will be right back. Okay, we're back. Uh, we're talking a little bit more about uh, my philosophy as it relates to the, the general principle of Occam's razor. Uh, sometimes they also call it the law of parsimony, uh, by the way. Uh, other people pronounce it parsimony, but uh, I have my own way of pronouncing stuff, and I often make up my own words as well, so you should uh, ignore just about everything I say. Uh, the point of uh, Occam's razor, again, is to try to give you a mental model that allows you to simplify your, your decision making and, and trust your guts, basically, trust your instincts. So when you think about multiple answers, the answer with the fewest assumptions, the answer with the fewest leaps of faith should be selected. So again, the simplest solution is usually the correct solution. And it's interesting that, you know, Occam's razor dates back uh, to a guy who is basically named Occam, although they, he's William of Occam, um, which is 13th, 14th century uh, time frame. And today we spell Occam's razor O-C-C-A-M. So if you want to look it up, uh, Occam's razor, that using that spelling. And one of the things that is, is interesting is he didn't call it Occam's razor. Other people referring to his work uh, referred to it uh, basically and started coining that phrase as Occam's razor. And you know, the, the, the theology of it is to make sure that you, you make the simplest scientific explanation or factual-based explanations you possibly can without having to put in a bunch of um, unnecessary assumptions. And this applies to business every day. Don't forget that as business owners, we are entirely problem solvers. We're consumed by solving problems. That's our job. And so for everybody who says, uh, gosh, you know, I thought this was going to be easier or, you know, if I'm my own boss, why is it so hard? The reality is uh, being the, the boss, being an entrepreneur means that you're just a problem solver full time. First, you try to solve a, a big picture problem for on behalf of customers. So you, you found a problem they have and you develop the product or service to, to uh, deal with that problem. And then you presented a, a life afterwards after that problem's been solved that they ended up buying. That's ultimately what you should sell, by the way, is the the life after, not the, the uh, product itself. So being in the business of problem solving means we're gonna face problems reg regularly, recurringly. And it's, it's unnecessary and it's unhelpful to find ourselves becoming confused or frustrated or even fatigued by problem solving. We're in business to solve problems. If there weren't problems, it would be easy and then anybody could do it. And so, Every time you kind of have a problem, you kind of give yourself a uh, 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 here, another problem, you know, and you can, uh, you know, kick yourself in the shin if you really want to feel pain, but otherwise go, all right, this is why I exist. This is what I'm meant to do. And then you go about your work in solving. When you're solving it, then you want to try to use, again, my principle or not the principle that I started, but the principle that I subscribe to, which again is Occam's razor. And that is all about trying to figure out what the simplest answer is, which is almost always the right answer. And we don't want to uh, oversimplify this thing, but we do want to say that if the, the, more, you, the more you pare down the, the excess, the more likely you are to be the core fundamental truth that is, that is leading you to the right decision. And even when you cannot describe to yourself in words, you can't articulate it, that's again because you're, the, I think it's the right side of the brain that, that's the creative side, is nonverbal and it can't trans transmit the the verbal instructions to the other side of the brain to, to just articulate here's the nature of the problem here's why I think it and here's what we're going to do about it but it's it it is sending you the the vibe that that gut feel as people call it that says some may right don't do this my spidey sense is tingling entrepreneurs have some of the best gut feels on the planet and it's when you don't follow your gut, you end up in a, a lot more trouble. And I can give you lots of examples of me not following my gut and it costing me dearly. Uh, 
in, in some cases, tens of millions of dollars. So uh, my recommendation to each of you, trust your gut, uh, study up on the principle of Occam's razor and really think about the most simple solution is often the correct solution. And, uh, and to peel away the fat and get right to the core of the issue. So uh, that's it for today, really. Uh, I was uh, definitely triggered by this uh, fake labor law uh, notice that I got sent by complete scam artists. Don't get sucked in. Don't be the prey. To be a fellow predator in the marketplace if you have to be, but don't be the prey. Uh, I'd rather not uh, be predators. I'd rather earn and uh, be in a, a market that exists and I create demand based on delivering value versus having to be a predator and uh, moving on to the next prey, right? We should, we should have kind of uh, long-term aspirations versus just, uh, you know, uh, one kill and be done. And that's so often what these types of scammy companies do. They want to just scam for as long as they can, and then they'll move on to the next scam. And in many ways, when you think about this labor law compliance notice, I'm sure they are very good at split testing. I have no doubt that they have multiple split tests. And, and my concept of, hey, here's a, here's a labor law. You need to be compliant with it. We know you're a new business, and we're going to make this super easy on you, and we'll even let you opt in for a multi-year subscription. I bet you that that didn't test as well as a percentage. But the, the reality is, does that mean that their business is not better off overall in the long run? And I would argue that it's not better off overall. It's a ticking time bomb. Regardless of the fact they put a little tiny disclaimer at the bottom that they say, filing labor compliance as a non-governmental publisher, they're clearly trying to look like the government. They're, definitely trying to scam people. And people do this all the time with contractors, licenses, and all kinds of different governmental departments. They try to impersonate the government and scare you into doing something. And I would just say, be extra careful and uh, don't fall victim to these scumbags. So that's it for me, Steve Simpson. I hope you uh, got something out of today. Don't forget uh, to pass the word on to your friends. Subscribe, like, and uh, you can even leave a review if you like. Uh, and I'll uh, put you on my Christmas list. How about that? There's uh, all the incentive that you need. And I don't mind incentivizing incentivizing reviews. Now, positive or negative, I'll put you on my Christmas card list. Um, full disclosure, I have not sent Christmas cards ever in my whole life, so uh, don't wait up if you don't get it. Thanks again, everybody. Talk to you soon. Empowering. The name says it all. Connecting e-commerce entrepreneurs with great people, ideas, systems, and the services needed to stay business dynamic and to grow. Empowery is a network, a cooperative venture of tools and resources to make you better at what you do because we love what you do. We are you. Visit Empowery.com to learn more. Well, gang, I hope you learned something today about the fact that things aren't always uh, what they appear to be. You know, despite the fact that this looks like a um, government approved and even government sent message, it couldn't be further from the truth. And these types of, you know, crazy, slimy uh, scumbags have been operating in the marketplace for years and they prey especially on the inexperienced entrepreneurs and business owners out there. I don't like scam artists. Again, it doesn't matter where they're attacking. Um, and I want to be sure that we do whatever we can to help shine the light on these, this problem and help people avoid these challenges. Well, we've done it again, everybody. We have another episode of the Awesomers podcast ready for the world. Thank you for joining us, and we hope that you've enjoyed our program today. Now's a good time to take a moment to subscribe, like, and share this podcast. Heck, you can even leave a, a review if you wanted. Awesomers around you will appreciate your help. It's only with your participation and sharing that we'll be able to achieve our goals. Our success is literally in your hands. Thank you again for joining us. We are at your service. Find out more about me, Steve Simonson, our guest, team, and all the other Awesomers involved at awesomers.com. Thank you again.